First, we are going to download Unity and all of the other components that we need along with it. So go in your browser and open a tab and here you are going to type on Google download Unity. And when you type that, you can click on this first link. So click here and you are going to go here on the Unity site and here you can download Unity. So we are going to click here, choose your Unity plus download. And here we have this personal edition. So this is the one that we want to download. Click here on free download and it will bring you here and you are going to download the installer. So again, click here, download installer and it will download this little package. I'm going to click here on save file and this is going to save it. Before I move on to download the SDK for the Android and Java JDK, I'm going to open what we have downloaded now. So this right here. And when we click on Unity Download Assistant, it will open this window where we are going to download Unity. The problem that I saw with students is that when we download Unity, we need to go here, continue and again continue and agree. And here, when we choose what we want to download, we need to click on this Android Build Support. If we don't click this right here, we will not have build support for Android and that's the problem that I saw with most students. So make sure that you click here on Android build support that you also download that component, then click on continue and select your destination where you want to download and install Unity and after that it will download Unity. So before we open Unity, here we are going to go and click again or open a new tab and I'm going to type here on Google download Java JDK and here I'm going to click on Java SD develop SE excuse me development kit so click on here and it will take you on the Oracle site right here and you are going to download Java for your platform so if you use Linux Mac or Windows you are going to download Java and install the Java development kit. And lastly, we are going to open a new tab and click here, download Android SDK and click on the first link. So here, AndroidStudio.com, it will take you right here or if they change the interface a little bit, but it will be the same page going downwards at the end, you can select only the SDK tools from Android and download them from your platform, so Windows, Mac or Linux, or you can also download it with the Android Studio. What's important that you remember the location where you have saved your SDK tools. If you download Android Studio, you can Google where is the location of Android SDK when you also download Android Studio. So make sure that you download all of that what is needed. And now, we are going to take a look at a little bit at Unity's interface. When you download and install Unity and open it, this is the window that you are going to see. Before this, actually, you're going to see a window where you can add your username and password and log in. And if you want to do so, you can create your account on Unity website and then you can simply type that username and password that you have created and you can log in. But you don't have to do that. But if you want to, you can go and simply create an account. When you open Unity, as I said, and log in with your username and password, this is what you're going to see right here. Here on this project tab, you are going to see the project that you have opened previously. For you, because you're opening Unity for the first time, probably, you're not going to see any projects right here. I see these two because I have opened them before. If you want to open an old project, you are going to click here on open and then you are going to search for the project folder where you have saved it. Click here and then click on open and it will open the project that you have created. If you want to create a new one, you are going to click here on the new tab. And here we are going to configure the name of the project, the path, and if we want a 2D or a 3D project. Since in our course, we are going to create mostly 2D games. We are going to hit here on 2D and we are going to create a 2D project. Here for the project name, I'm simply going to type tester because we are only going to take a look at Unity's interface and not do anything. 
and for the location you are going to choose where you want to install or excuse me create the folder that we are going to create here from unity so here mine is going to be at downloads and i'm going to hit on create project again make sure that you have clicked here on 2d because we want to create a 2d and not a 3d project and click create project and now unity will create that project for us and here we have our project what you see right here where I'm pointing with my mouse so right here this is called a scene and here we have a scene tab as you can see a scene is where we are going to put all of our game objects and interact with them before we continue to explore the scene and everything what we have we are going to configure our project for Android so we have downloaded here Android SDK and Java JDK when we go back here and on unity I'm going to click here this is on Mac click on unity and then go on preferences on Windows I think it's under Windows and here you can find preferences if you can find just type on Google where are preferences for Windows on unity and you will find it right away so we are going to click here on unity and preferences and then we are going to go under external tools and here for the Android we see the SDK and JDK path so we are simply going to click here on browse and you are going to search where you have saved your Android SDK and when you locate it simply click on the folder and then click on choose and it will select that folder for your Android SDK so simply just make sure that you select the folder where you have saved it when you have download your Android SDK. For Java JDK, we are going to do the same thing. So simply click on browse and it will automatically find Java if it does not find it. If you have remembered where you have saved Java, then you are going to locate your folder. If you did not remember, then simply type on Google where is Java located on Windows or on Mac and then you can choose that folder and simply click here choose and it will be selected here for unity and this is for the configuration for android sdk and jdk also when we want to change the project so when we go here under file and then click on build settings so file and then build settings here you are going to see the platforms for which you can create games if you want to change for Android, because currently we are set on PC, Mac and Linux, you see this Unity logo right here indicating that our project is for PC, Mac and Linux. If we want to change it for another platform, for example Android, we are simply going to select Android right here and click switch platform and now we see that this Unity logo is pointing here on Android, meaning that our project now is configured for Android and it will run on Android devices. So now let us explore Unity's interface. Here uh, we have our scene which I already mentioned. And in our scene we are going to add every game object such as our player, enemies, collectible items, platforms, backgrounds, so on and so forth. All of that is going to be right here in our scene. In our scene here we have the main camera which we can see here in this hierarchy panel and this hierarchy panel indicates everything what we have in the scene. Currently we only have the main camera and the camera is going to preview what we are going to see on our device or in our game. Here on the right side we have the inspector panel. The inspector panel will show us all the properties that we have for a specific game object. So our camera is also a game object and everything what we add in the scene is a game object that we can interact with. And here we can see its properties. So we see that we have transform and transform will determine the position, the rotation and the scale of a given game object. And here I have these four tools and I can click on these arrows right here and I can move the game object. Notice now in the transform, when I move on the x-axis, notice how these numbers increase and decrease depending on which side I am dragging my game object. 
In Unity and its coordinate systems, the left side is the negative side. The right side is the positive side. That is for the X axis. For the Y axis, up is positive and down is negative. And here we also see the camera script attached on the camera. We can set the projection to orthographic or perspective. Perspective is for 3D and orthographic is for 2D. This is the size of the camera. So notice now when I move this number up and down, how the camera or this rectangle is resizing. And here we are going to see all other properties that we add. When we attach a script on a game object, we are going to see that right here in the inspector panel. Below here we have the project folder, or excuse me, the project tab, console, animation, and animator. Here for the project we are going to see everything what we import. Here we can create folders, we can right click, and then we can create and click on folder, and here we can create a folder. For example, we can type here sprites, and here we are going to save all of the assets or the artwork for our game. If you don't see the project here, console, animation, or animator, you can go here under window and see all of the windows that we can open or the tabs that we can open. So here we have the inspector tab, the hierarchy that we already saw, the scene tab, the game tab, so on and so forth. When you open a new tab here under window, you're going to see it like this. It will be detached, so something like this. And then you can simply drag it like this and attach it wherever you want it. So you can attach it here, you can attach it here, you can drag these and put them wherever you want to. Below or near here, the scene tab, we have the game tab. The game tab is what we are going to see when we run our game. And here we can configure the resolution that we want to use for our game. So under game tab and right here we see the resolutions that we have. So here we have the portrait 320 by 480, so on and so forth. You can see all of these resolutions and we can select different one of them. So notice how this blue window right here resizes when we select or it shrinks when we select a different resolution. You can also create your own custom resolutions by clicking right here and then on this plus sign. And here for the label, this is the name of your resolution. So here I can type my resolution and we can choose a fixed one. So the fixed resolution will allow us to type the width and height. So for example, we can type here 1280 by 720 and click OK. And here we have my resolution and we can select it now and work for that resolution. Why is this important? Well, when we create games and we are going to see that in our course, we are going to create our assets for a specific resolution and then work based on that resolution. So here we have created our sprites folder. I'm going to rename it. So simply hit enter when you select the folder and I'm going to type scripts. And here we are going to save our scripts. In order to create a script, you are going to right click and then go create. And here we have C sharp or JavaScript that we can create. In our course, we are going to use C sharp and learn C sharp language. So I'm going to click here and create a C sharp script. When we create it, we can name it right away. So I'm going to name it my script and hit enter. And now if I double click on it, it will open in Mono Develop uh, environment or development environment that comes along with Unity. So this is what we are going to see when we open our script. I'm not going to go into details right away what all of this here is. We will explain that a little bit later when we start or when we get to know variables, functions, classes, so on and so forth. We will do that in a couple of next videos. But this is how can we create and open a script. So simply right click and then create and then select C sharp script. If you want to open it, simply double click it and Mono Develop will open it right here. This is just a brief introduction to Unity and its interface. When we start creating our games, we are going to use Unity and its interface more and get to know each component more and more. For the animation, I mentioned these panels right here, animation and animator. 
Here we are going to create our animations and in our animator we are going to connect those animations together. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but here we have these two panels. If you don't see them, again, you can go under window and here you have the animation and here you have the animator and you can open them and simply if they are detached like this, simply drag them where you want to put them right here. And we will see this in action when we start creating our games and when we start animating the player, so on and so forth. As I said, this was just a brief introduction to Unity and its interface. Here also I've mentioned these tools that we have. I don't know what is the name of each of this individual tool, but with this hand we can drag like this in our scene. With these arrows we can move our game objects on a specific axis or like this where we want to but more often than not we are going to position them using these coordinates so if we want our game object to be at zero zero we are not going to drag it like this so we are not going to drag it like this until we position it at zero zero instead we are simply going to type zero zero right here for the transform in the inspector panel this one is used for the rotation so the next one is used for the rotation and we can rotate where we want to on the x on the z axis so on and so forth the next one is used for the scale so we can rescale our game object because this is a camera we don't see any effect but we are going to see that in our other game objects when we scale them here on the x and on the y axis and the last one also, we don't see it because we are on the camera, but on our other game objects, we can simply manipulate the scale, the position, and all of the other properties with this one also. As I said, we are going to see all of this later on when we start creating our games. And now we are going to take a look at a little bit how can we use scripting or the C-sharp language. So we are going to get to know the variables, functions, classes, so on and so forth. Let's dive into that next.